Welcome back. Uh, I missed you guys. Good to see you. I wasn't talking to you specifically, but uh, obviously week one, game one is always, to me, unique in college football in particular. Um, I don't know if there's another sport. I know at no other level do you not have any scrimmage or any, like, joint practice or, or do anything where you uh, – can test yourself a little bit different against somebody else than college football. So um, every year is kind of like this and, and unique, but to to obviously to start off with a game like this um, on the road in a, in, a, in a really crazy hostile environment is going to be unique for us. I mean, uh, with having a lot more, you know, I'd say new faces. I say this to our guys all the time. They're not new faces. A lot of these guys have been here. They just haven't been maybe the recognizable faces to a lot of other people. So um, as we all know, there'll, there'll be some – some newer guys that maybe uh, in the last few years haven't been out there on play one of some sorts. Um, but nonetheless, it, uh, it's been a long time coming. I know our guys are, are incredibly excited. Uh, 24 practices you know, against one another um, is, you, is really difficult. And uh, as you get to these last few days, last few practices before your first game, it's, it's tough. It's tough to stay focused. It's tough for our guys to kind of you know shift modes in some ways and, and not wish away some of the days. Um, but it's getting it's getting close, and uh, I'm excited for them. I'm excited for us. Uh, it's going to be a you know, obviously a great experience all around. Um, I don't know if I've announced this yet, but we've obviously voted the other day on captains. We'll have five guys who will represent us as captains. I'm not a huge captains guy. I tell our team this. I think those those are the guys that represent us, whether it's you know on a game day or in other situations. But We've got a lot of guys in this team that are leaders, um, but we'll have five. We'll have two guys on defense in Will Huber and uh, Jabari Taylor, and then we'll have three guys offensively with Dylan O'Quinn, <clears throat> Josh Wiley, and Trey Tucker. Um, I know there can only be four out at the coin toss, so obviously we'll only have four, but uh, those are the guys that will represent us. But um, like I've said to our team, like I'll say to you guys, we've got a lot of uh, leaders, and I'm always curious to see at the end of the year who – legitimately are those guys that have led the entire season through the ups and the downs. And uh, as you know, in our program, we'll, we'll, we'll obviously announce those guys at the end of the year as well. Question for Coach. Coach, do you know who you may start a quarterback? What's that? Do you know who you yeah, start yeah. But that, I don't think there's any reason to you know talk about it. You know what I mean? I don't know that uh, it does anything good for our team. It doesn't do anything good in the opponents in the preparations of things. Um, so I've always kind of said that from the get-go. I don't know that last year we announced a starter. I don't know that it was much of a question. Uh, I don't think the year before we announced a starter. Uh, again, I don't know if it was much of a question. So for us, you know, obviously you got to have a plan and you got to move forward with it. Um, but there's no reason for us really to kind of announce things. Yeah, we did. You know, you wanted it to be a little bit earlier, um, but I thought that the way those guys competed, uh, it, it was a little harder to do. And uh, there's never a perfect time. There's never the, the exact right time. Um, but I think it was important for us just to, you know, to make sure that, you know, we're getting those guys the reps they need, especially going into that week one. Um, but anytime you've got new, and I'm not want people looking over this, so anytime you've got new guys, new quarterbacks in particular, you know, you got to have a plan for all. And uh, I think that's the, the thing that I'll, you know, I'll continue to push our guys for that. Uh, those guys are going to continue to grow, um, but there is a plan, you know, because there are a little bit different guys, and based on who is in there, we would have to, you know, adapt a little bit because you want to do what guys do well, and uh, you know, it doesn't mean you change who you are, but you, you got to kind of start to figure that out. Same way defensively, you know, you got to do what you do well, and uh, you know, we've gotten away a lot in the last few years of playing really well and playing a lot more, you know man coverage or on body coverage and I'm not saying we can't and won't but uh, you know there's some things we'll have to do a little bit different just because you know maybe our guys do things a little bit differently and uh, do some other things well that maybe we didn't do in the past uh, no I mean it could but I mean there's there's situations that you know you always need um, but uh, you know again those are kind of things that you know we always got plans and plans are subject to change, and plans don't always come out the way they're, they're supposed to. Because when the ball hits the, you know, when the ball hits the, the foot, it's the ball. It'll, a lot of things have to adapt and adjust. And uh, you know what? No, no matter what, whether it's a quarterback position, whether it's the corner position, there's going to be more than just 11 guys that are ready to play. There's going to be more than 11 guys that got a, you know, a plan to play. And uh, you know, we've got to be able to adapt. Yeah, 
Well, it's it's not easy. You know, you could say, well, we, we pump music in and we, and we want it to be loud, but the reality is you, you want to have good practices. So I think there's a balance there. Um, we started probably last week at really kind of talking about the environment, talking about the atmosphere, um, making sure we're aware of, of uh, you know, what it's going to be like. I, I can't exactly tell them because I've never been there. Uh, obviously, I've, you know, heard and, and talked to a lot of other people. Um, but it's one of those things that's hard to prepare for. You know, because, you know, it's kind of twofold. Like I said, you, you know, there's a lot of other things that you got to prepare for as well. And sometimes the atmosphere is one of those things that, uh, you know, that sometimes gets in the second, you know, secondary just because, you know, with the younger team, you got to have some really good practices. But I know that uh, after the, the, uh, the playoff game last year, I think I didn't do a good enough job at preparing our guys for the environment and the atmosphere. So I think that uh, we've used that. And, and how we kind of started that game as something that we know we got to get better at. Um, so it's been since January, whatever that was, second, third, fourth, coming back, talking about how do we get better. It had, about, it had been about handling the atmosphere and the environments that we're going to play in, thinking about it being week one. Uh, I didn't tell them it was about week one, but it was really about, hey, let's, let's make sure we understand this, even all the way back from January 2nd. We're talking about how we prepare for, for September 3rd. Well, it's their team. It's our team. Uh, and I think they do. Uh, and, um, you know, there's something you don't want to get caught up in. I know that, uh, you know, it's something we're proud of. We don't want to shy away from it because, you know, I'm not saying it was always like that. And, uh, you know, but that's one of those steps to, to, you know, for me, even when I came here, is wanting these guys to experience the environments like we're going to play in on Saturday, but also the environments of, you know, what a college campus feels like when there's a buzz, what a community feels like when there's a buzz. Um, I remind them again, too much is given, much more is expected. And where there are some young guys that are walking in here and maybe haven't done a whole lot to, you know, earn or create that, um, they're walking in with, with an expectation to how to be able to handle things like that. So all things that we really want to create, all things that these guys in this room, uh, you know, have seen grow over the last three or four years, uh, I know they're all proud of it, but it's not one of those things that you get a whole lot of time to take, take some deep breaths and enjoy. Um, hopefully maybe some of those guys from the last few years will enjoy it because they, they were a big part of creating it as well. I don't really remember. I mean, obviously, I, I, I know a lot about it. I mean, I, and not exactly from that game. All I remember is we were down to about one corner left on the bench, and we got a punt blocked with about a minute to go in the game. And we called an all-out pressure and dropped a, a boundary end. Cincinnati, Ohio kid had picked it off and ended the game for us. But other than that, I <laughs> those are some of the positive ones that I remember. I do remember we left a call sheet someplace that uh, some way somehow ended up in the hands of, of the – the, the opposing team, it wasn't planted. It wasn't one of those things that was unique. Just one of our GAs, I think, left it in the, the Burger King. And so, um, <laughs> no, other than that, I, I don't uh, I don't remember. Um, I know it's going to be loud. I know it's going to be a hostile environment. I know it's going to be one of those ones that, you know, you want your guys to be able to play in and enjoy because this is what college football is all about. Yeah, I mean, he obviously they led the they led the SEC in rushing last year. They, they're the the leading rusher in the country outside of really the triple option types of teams, probably. Um, you know, I, I think in his growth, I think I'm sure that they don't want him to be their leading rusher. Would be my guess, um, but he is very dynamic at what he does, and uh, he can throw the ball. I think he's getting better and better at that. Um, but he is a dual threat guy, and not just is he a dual threat guy to run; he's a dual threat guy to run you over. And I think the unique thing about it is when when quarterbacks not just are willing but able to run downhill, not just laterally. To me, they put a lot more pressure on defenses. <laughs> well, it's really hard. You know, another thing that's hard to to simulate, just like sometimes the environment, the atmosphere, because you know what the environment atmosphere comes down to is you know your emotions and 
it's not like you're going to trigger those kinds of emotions in a practice based on the environment. And it's the same thing. You know, it's, it's hard to simulate a six foot four, 245 pound guy running downhill as a quarterback. Um, you just got to be prepared for it. You got to be able to tackle well. You got to be able to tackle physically. Um, you know, and you got to be able to do it on a consistent basis. There's a lot of things that this is going to test, and that being one of them, and in our ability to continue to grow, um, not changing expectations, but being able to attack, you know, um, opportunities like this. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's all a part of that. But like I try to remind, it, it, look, we we define who we are, we define, you know, what it looks like, and whether that's, you know, what our us is or what success is. And this is another step in you know in this team, not. Not the past teams, not the program. I think as you go into week one, you got to really focus on this team. And uh, as you get into the season, as you know, you start to talk to the coach, he talks about the program. But I think as you start it, as you give these guys their due, uh, you talk about this team. And uh, so we don't worry as much about those bigger pictures as we are worrying about that, what us looks like uh, and how all those guys handle not just the environment, but how they handle one another um, on the road in particular. Uh, it, it gets you kickstarted. I think it definitely makes your camp a little bit different. Um, I don't know that there's an exact science in the way to go about things. You know, it, these things are done way outside, you know, in, in, in advance a long way, um, you know, but it is what it is. You know, whatever they line up in front of you is what you got to be prepared for. And sometimes I've said it as we went into camp, our camp was going to be different this year, different because of the way we start the season, different because what the first four games look like, but also different because, you know, our team is different. So I think we've gone about it in a little different way. And uh, I know this, these guys are ready for this, and, and this is going to be a great opportunity for us. No, I think that it, it's out of respect for our guys. You know, you, you, you take a Deshaun Pace and a, and, and a Ty Van Fossen, or, well, yeah, they both played 50, I think they almost played exactly 50% of the snaps last year, and they're coming back playing the same position. That's what gives us a chance to be better in the long run. When those guys can play, you know, half the snaps, there's no drop-off, there's no difference. Um, it's amazing what it you know does for you as you you know, go along and, and what you are by the end of the season. So it's not gamesmanship. It's just, hey, we, we've got guys that uh, deserve to be out there for the first snap. There can only be 11. Um, but there's plenty of those guys that will rotate on a, on a consistent basis. And that's what it really is about, you know. Because I know there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a human element to, to being that starter guy and that guy that walks out on the first snap. Um, but you can't let that soak into all the things. That's why there's a lot of ors. There's a lot of guys that are going to play significant amounts. If, if we can play more guys at 50-50 or 60-40, then I think we'll be better in game one and we'll be a hell of a lot better you know, as the season progresses. You told me before the season you'd like to find a lead back. Um, you have enough ors for Royal Boat and Wayne Wright being there now. Well, it, that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I think – Are you – No, we don't know. Well, yeah, it, we are. We are in a process. And I think that's, I told you, it was the harder position to evaluate and, and to really kind of say who's going to be your guy because you don't live tackle. You don't do some of those things. And you need a lot more of those guys in those opportunities, um, you know, in, in game one in particular. Now, obviously, I think that, you know, Ryan Montgomery being a, being a returning guy and a senior will be the guy that starts off in there and, you know, would take that first rep. But uh, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to be by committee. And uh, as you progress throughout the season, I, I think I've always said it at that position in particular, you got to have a one and a two, you know, and you got to know who you're riding. And we've been very fortunate in the last four years to know that and have that. And, uh, you know, we don't know exactly what that is yet. So there might be more like three or four right now, um, which makes it difficult. But I think as you get in the game, you got to plan. Uh, you got to be able to adapt and adjust. But um, a lot of guys there that, that deserve some opportunities. Uh, and that's where we got to grow. No, I don't have a whole lot of friends. I don't have a lot of guys I call and talk to. No, we, we have. We've never crossed paths. I, I met him actually for the first time, I think, last year at the convention. Um, 
great guy, but uh, I don't think I don't know if there's any real connection crossing paths of any sorts, um, you know, other than being probably a little closer, like-minded guys that are O-line and D-line type of guys that uh, maybe don't get these opportunities as much as some of the other guys. Because of the style, do you expect this to be pretty nasty? Up I, w- I would imagine. I mean, I, I would imagine that that's. You know, I think that uh, they pride themselves in things like that. We pride ourselves in things like that. Week one, you're always trying to figure out who you exactly are. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be like that. It's going to be a tough, nasty game. And, um, you know, just like the environment's going to be. And uh, we've prepared ourselves for that. Um, that's what the expectation is. If something would change, then obviously you got to adapt and adjust. But uh, if there's anything I think we got a pretty good idea of, I would imagine it's going to be – the type of physical game that it's going to be. I know you often aren't a president, so don't like, get too much into the game, try to do it too early, like the fourth quarter of the fourth. How much Arkansas have you done? Well, no, we've, we've been into it now. It, last week was the tough one, you know, as you come back onto campus and, and you start school and, you know, how much of the Arkansas stuff do you do? Because if you do too much, then you're right by by Wednesday uh, of, of game week that, you know, they're 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 ready to go and, you know, you can't, can't be there too soon. So, Another thing that we had to kind of prepare for and think about ahead of time, knowing what kind of game we had in game one. And, uh, you know, so I think we did a, a good balance of it. I don't think our guys are to the point where they're, you know, feel like they, they just want to play the game. They know that there's there's still a lot to, a lot of work to be done. And uh, even though it's only a Tuesday, it's a Wednesday practice for us. So, um, you know, we're, we're in a good place. And, uh, you know, our guys just got to stay focused. No. Well, I mean, I don't think that there's there's not a whole lot of change of expectations in the whole program. How you prepare and how you go about things is uniquely different. And, you know, not that you got – is there's not a book on it. There's not, you know, hey, well, okay, if you if you play this in week one, then this is how you go through camp. But to me, the, the, the uniqueness is, is how you prepare camp-wise, whether, you know, what kind of team you got. Meaning, you know, last year was a different camp. You had a lot of – guys that had played an incredible amount of snaps and uh this year was a different camp because we had a lot of guys that were in battles and you know a quarterback one in particular that uh you know that really needed some high level and some competitive more competitive situations and then obviously opening up in a game like this so it's not the expectation of any sorts it's just you know I think the the whole plan and how you go about it and it starts with camp There's a guy that's earned everything and, uh, you know, been in a situation that's been tough. He's been behind, obviously, a great player um, and even had some of those other failures where all of a sudden, you know, in the bowl game that uh, we moved our quant over there right before the game. Um, and it just that was a really, really difficult situation for him to handle, you know, because I know that that was one of those opportunities where he thought it was, you know, this was my time and uh, just the way things had to go and the way things, you know, went that time. I think those were all growing opportunities for him. He handled them. He didn't bail. He stuck through it. He stuck with us. He believed. He trusted us. Um, he's done a really, really, really good job all through camp. He's probably been, you know, the one guy in the back end outside, you know, Hicks that, you know, has played a lot of ball that, you know, in all those positions that you were like, okay, if we're going to roll these guys and we're going to give them opportunities. That's been the most consistent. He's been at that spot the whole time, and uh, he's never relinquished it. And uh, so he's going to have a really, really big year. He's going to have a really good year. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if I knew exactly what to expect. I just what surprised me more is his ability to to connect, his ability to, you know, be a part of the group and the team and the unit. Um, Not that I didn't think he would, but sometimes when guys walk in, you know, there is a little bit, you know, especially within our you know kind of culture and environment, there is a little bit of, you know, time it takes for everybody and for you to kind of fit and feel really comfortable. But uh He's done a phenomenal job at buying into everything that we've done. And, you know, from changing his body to, you know, subbing and rolling to maybe playing two positions um, to being probably the guy that in the program that's quickest to have gone to the play hard board. And uh, I know he's older, so he's not like a freshman walking in the door. But I think Ethan Wright did it in a year and a half. And, you know, Ivan could have done it at the end of spring, but we held it. And he probably did it within six, and six seven months. And, uh, you know, I think that's – made him, you know, or not say made him, but allowed the, the, the team and the entire program to kind of 
really recognize him and accept him and uh, has been a really good fit. Really good player. Now, do we know is he is he the same thing? I don't know. Will they use him in the same way? I think those are the things that you're always you know curious about in week one, and uh, you know where they know he's a dynamic player. Obviously, led Oklahoma in receiving last year, and and uh, you know, but you know, in, in what ways will they use him? You know, that's that's things you got to kind of figure out. We definitely know who he is. We know where he'll be. Um, you know, whether it's the same as as Burke, I don't know that. Maybe you can give me some insight on. You know, on that, or, or somebody could ask coach and he could let us know. But uh, the reality is they've got athletes and uh, they're going to put them in position to get them the ball. And uh, however they do that with them, whether it's down the field or whether it's doing a lot like they did with Burke, we won't know till the game. Did anyone say you soft talk yet? No. I think I did see something, but I, I have, not, uh, have not got any of that yet. I'd be disappointed if it comes out without uh, – he didn't send it to our pro. It should be in our. It should be in our players' lounge, or for sure in the uh, cafeteria that we got back there. That if it's not, I'd be really disappointed. So you can let him know. Are you the soft guy? Just because of Ahmad, yeah. Otherwise, not that often. But uh, I don't know that <laughs> I'm not exactly a foodie, so I don't get into it as much. Um, but if he uh, if he's got his own little thing going, then I can assure you <laughs> we will represent it. I told you before, I don't have a whole lot of friends and I don't get invited to a whole lot of parties. So I don't know what I would do. I just know who I am and uh, I guess they'll find out.